All right, in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to install Yamaha's YDS Diagnostic Software. I think it actually stands for Yamaha Diagnostic Software. I recently purchased this. Uh, this one came from eBay. Uh, there's some versions that are available on Amazon as well, and I'll put a link to some of these. Uh, perhaps not exactly the same one with this little card, but uh, similar. Comes with two cables. Uh, one of them has the Yamaha Diagnostic Plug to an ODB female connector. And it also comes with an ODB2 to USB connector. Now, there may be a little bit of a challenge getting it to work on a laptop, but I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. Then we're going to go out to the boat, hook it up to my F70, and I'll show you where the plug on the F70 is and some of the features that are available on the YDS software. So before we do anything, I'm going to plug these two together because that's how they work. And that's a good start. Let me show you how to install the software. This, this can be a challenge, um, but I know exactly how to get it to work. All right, so one of the things I was able to do is I got this refurbished laptop. I think I got it on eBay for 80 bucks. There's some other things I was doing in the workshop that needed a laptop to record. Um, so this seemed like a pretty good deal. It's fairly modern. Uh, came with Windows pre-installed, easy to run. So let me go ahead and get this logged in, and then we're going to go through the process of installing the software and getting it to run correctly. So the first thing we want to do is install the software. Uh, it had me a little bit puzzled, but what you want to do with these is basically just click it open, and it's actually a USB drive. All right, I've already made a copy of the software on the system, so I'm going to show you the sequence that I did to get this to work. So let's look at the software. The first thing we want to do is we want to run it as administrator. So when you plug in your USB drive, you're gonna see these files. This application is an executable. You wanna right click and you want to run this as administrator. Now it's gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna go ahead and rerun it. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, do you wanna allow this app to make changes to your, vibe yet? to your device? Yes, we do. Do install. So one of the things it's going to want to do is install the CDM drivers. This is a USB drivers and allows this device to connect. Um, I would recommend at this point that you actually plug it in. And to recognize that it's in there, go ahead and do extract. Next. And this is going to install the drivers once we accept and run it. Now we're not through yet. There's a few other things that we need to do. Hit your Windows plus R button. That's going to let you search. You're going to type in devmgmt.msc device management. That's going to bring up this particular window. You're going to look for ports, common LPT. And it's going to or should show up at least a USB serial port. Mine originally came up as COM4 and would not communicate to the engine. So what you want to do is go to Properties. And over here you can change it to COM1. So if we go to Port Settings, go to Advanced, it'll tell you what communications port it is. COM1 was available, that's what you want. And that's the only way that this is going to communicate with the engine, is by selecting COM1. So you hit OK. Leave it at the defaults, 9600, 8 and none, 1. Those are basically serial parameters that sound how many bits the second operate, uh, how many data bits they are. It's pretty common, pretty standard. But what we're doing is we're telling the USB um, to act as COM1 using these parameters. You hit OK. All right, so we need to go through one more step to make this work correctly. And that is going to the installed software icon. Let's go to properties. Go to compatibility, and we want to tell it to run as Windows XP Service Pack 3. That seems to work best. Hit OK. Now that that's done, we are ready to take this to the engine and plug it in. So I'm going to go show you exactly where in the engine it plugs in, and we'll do some quick diagnostics and show you what's available in the software. All right, to give you some perspective, we're in the very front of the engine, and um, there is a plug right next to this and to the left of the control cable this plug right here and what you want to do is take that out 
and you want to plug the ODB cable into that. All right, so that's plugged in. And again, this is at the very front of the engine, just to give you a little bit of perspective uh, where it is and what I'm doing. We've got that plugged in. The other end is plugged into the laptop. And at this point, I'm going to turn it on. We're not running the engine, just turning it on. All right, engine's turned on. Diagnostic cable's plugged in here, plugged into the engine. So we're going to go ahead and run that software. Yes, we do. Start service tool. Press any key to continue. Scan tool. And here we go. There, let me go through some of the menus. Um, diagnosis is a good one to start with. Let's hit that. Go to diagnosis. It's going to make a list of everything that is actually tracked, the sensors that it's got. Knock sensor, throttle position sensor. Um, the good thing is that everything's normal. Now, I got this because I wanted to validate engine hours, and um, I was able to do that. Uh, and the <laughs> engine stop lanyard switch is off. It's good because that means the engine will run. If it's on, the engine won't run. Um, diagnosis record. Has anything happened in the recent past that is of interest? And in this case, yeah, there's one code 19 battery voltage and occurred at 225.8 hours. Uh, it'll tell you what to do. Check the battery voltage of engine monitor, check connection, you know, go on and so forth. What do you do if you have a battery with low voltage? The engine monitor. Now, these are the current stats. The engine's not running. These things will change. Uh, so it gives you a, a, some interesting data, ignition, timing, battery voltage right now it's 12.3 if when I start this up the battery voltage goes up to 14 and change which is great because that means it's charging the battery so that's one thing you can check um, intake pressure atmospheric pressure ignition timing just a number of things ignition timing is blank right now uh, because the engine's not running so there's no changes to it uh, stationary tests are things that you can do and um, while the engine is not running so ignition coils one and four um, basically it'll it'll fire those and give you some results uh, it'll also do that for the injectors and the fuel pump and the isc valve active test is when the engine is running um, this is all that's available at this point i've seen in some instances the availability is the capability to turn off cylinders one two three or four i don't think that um i want to do that so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that but i do want to show you what it is here and um that is under active test so the last area i want to show you is the data logger and you can do the data comparison graph here where you can select certain components and it'll graph them you can select up to two components and while you're running the engine it'll it'll paint a graph for you and you can save any of this data the uh, let's go back return to, so we can hit escape and this is a neat one engine hours so it'll give you total engine hours and in this case 334 this is a 2015 I'm pretty pleased with that it wasn't run that much although it looks like it was run pretty hard at one point over 6,000 rpm this unit is 6,000 rpm so hopefully not too far above 6,000 gives you the total hours so, I mean, there we go. This is a pretty good handy software to have. Uh, the one thing that it does do that I did not mention, which makes this worthwhile. Let's exit, and I'll show you. So, let me show you the manuals. Uh, you'll have access to all the uh, manuals for the modern engines. Um, there's a whole list of manuals here. I believe this is for the specific 2008 manuals, um, which have a weird start, but... Uh, you can go through the whole list so um, pretty much every manual that you may need on a modern engine is going to be included here i hope this video has been helpful to you if it has hit share and like and good luck with your yds software installation and hopefully you'll have no problems getting it up and running and helping you look at your engine thanks for watching